Hey friends, welcome back to Simply Home and Harvest. I'm Jen. Today we are in a different location doing something a little bit different. We're actually at my church and this is our Sunday school classroom. Now I know it looks like a kid's classroom because it doubles as a children's classroom on Wednesday nights, but we use it on Sunday morning for the marriage and family class. And we were asked to put up a Christmas tree over the weekend. I didn't feel too well, so I left that to Tim and I'm gonna show y'all in a minute. Christmas tree that he put together and decorated. And so I felt like maybe I should come in and um, redo a few things. So I'm here, I brought some things with me. I'm gonna try to use what they have, um, but I'm thinking maybe a different color scheme. And then we might spruce up things a little bit. It's a lot going on in this room with all the, the painting, the murals on the wall and bulletin boards and stuff. So I'm not gonna do too much. I'll probably just pick a corner and stick with that. But I thought this would be something that you guys might enjoy. We are getting ready for a Sunday school breakfast this weekend. It's our Christmas Sunday school breakfast. Everybody brings something in. I, every year just about, I make a breakfast casserole that is always requested. So I'm going to show you that recipe in this video as well. And maybe bring you along to see everything else that we have on Sunday morning. So hang out with me for a little while and let's get this tree transformed. Okay, y'all. So this is what we're working with. Just disregard the fall bulletin board in the back there. I'm not changing bulletin boards out today, but Tim worked really hard putting the base of the tree into the tree stand there and then topping it all off with a star that needs batteries. It doesn't even light up. <laughs> so he was pretty proud of himself. I have a feeling that more was expected from us and probably it was thought that we wouldn't, you know, put the tree in the center of the table. So I'm gonna find a spot, make this tree into an actual tree and give it a little bit of attention. So here's the Christmas tree, which hopefully it has all its pieces in them. Here are the decorations that were already in the box. And I'm thinking like I wanna do red, black, white, silver kind of tree. And I know a lot of these ornaments have like a gold trim on them. This is red, red. So, um, I might make some changes, but I'll probably use some of these ornaments just because we have so many of them. and used a couple of strands that I brought with me instead of the red lights. Um, I had to go very conservative with the lights, so I couldn't do my usual floral wrap of all the branches, but I think when we get some ornaments on there, it's gonna be just fine, and I fluffed as the best I could, so <laughs> I don't think it looks too bad, though. I added the black and white tree skirt, we'll see. I just wanted to put it on there just to get an idea. So I might stick with that. I don't know. I'm gonna come back tomorrow and finish it though. It's kind of getting late in the evening and I need to get home and fix dinner. And it's church night here. So I need to get out of everybody's way. But I wanted to show you, I did, I took down the bulletin board. I think I'm gonna do something with that. I had these pillow covers and some batting. And so I just filled the pillow covers with a little bit of batting and made uh, pillows out of them. I wasn't using those at home this year. Um, so they made the bench really cute. I just realized that there's a piece broken in the front there, but I think that's adorable. And then I think when we fix the bulletin board and then with our tree done, we'll have it looking all Christmassy in here. I also thought maybe, just maybe, I don't know, I could hang some snowflakes right here from this window. If I can find some fishing line, that would be so cute. So I might do that too. All right, guys, it's day two of decorating. It is so cold and windy outside. Oh, 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 well, we just, these little, these old bones gonna have to get used to this weather. I am heading back to the church to finish decorating the tree. I did pick up, go out and pick up some ornaments that were more the color scheme I was going for. I'm hoping to knock out this project very quickly. 
so I can get back home because I know you guys are wanting some videos and I have got lots of editing to do. That's the thing about making videos. I can make content for you all day long. It's the editing part that seems to be the most difficult for me because I have to sit down and pay attention to that stuff. And I'm not a, I'm not good at just like sitting. I'm just not. I'm constantly wanting to do stuff and, and be busy. So I know that's part of being busy, but still just, I feel like I put the editing part off to the last minute. So I've got to get back home and take care of that. Leftovers is what we're having for dinner. So I don't have to worry about dinner. But let's go knock this tree out and get back home. All right, we got all our supplies laid out. Got my ribbon back again. Here are the ornaments and garland that I picked up yesterday. Everything is from Family Dollar and Dollar General. So we're going to decorate this tree on the cheap using things from the dollar store. Okay. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is take the ribbon that I've been wanting to use for a long time but it just has not gone with my decor at home. And I probably had this for a couple of years and I got it, I think from Dollar General, maybe like three years ago, you can see the price tag there. But I think this combination is gonna be so cute. So this is what I'm really basing my decor for the tree off of is this ribbon. So the first thing I wanna do is make a tree topper for it. And I don't want it to be too large because you can see that the tree is gonna have to be in front of the TV. I don't know how much the TV will be used between now and Christmas, um, but I didn't want to bake the bow too large or put a star there to block the TV. So we're gonna go on the smaller scale. So let's get that done first. I'll show you my easy way to make a big bow. Um, I make these for like wreaths and I made it for our tree topper this year. Um, this is just the simplest way I think to make a bow. And I think I shared this with you already, but last year I tried to do this fancy bow I saw on TikTok and it was just not even close to one of these bows. So I'm gonna bring you down to the table. We'll get this knocked out. We'll probably go ahead and string some of the ornaments and then we'll get this tree decorated. Okay, so for this one, I'm not sure if I want like trailing ribbon coming down. So I'm going to probably make the ends longer just in case I do wanna go that route. And first thing I need to do is get all these unwrapped. I probably should've done that already. Sometimes that's the hardest part, is like getting into the packaging. You'll hear vacuuming in the background. Um, our church is being clean right now, so I'm hoping I won't be in the way or make a mess. All right, y'all, give me a minute. All right, here we go. So, first thing you wanna do is get a piece of wire. This was left over from another project. So, just got a piece of floral wire here. And each roll of ribbon is nine feet. So that's gonna go quickly, but I'm going to do about that much of a tail on it. So the key to making these bows is to not let go of the ribbon as you're making it. So first thing we're gonna do is create a loop. I'm going to do, and then you just pinch. And this is all a wired ribbon, which makes it so much easier. So you just pinch. I may have already showed you this this year, I don't know. Y'all, things are just running together for me. So much going on. All right, so that's about as big of a loop as I want to think about three inches. Because this is a patterned ribbon, all of it is, you're gonna twist, okay? I'm just going, there we go. <laughs> you're gonna twist and then pinch, okay? So there's two loops. Twist again. I'm just gonna kind of look and see. That's three. I thought about just doing three of each one. Yes, that's what we're gonna have to do. Okay, so there we go with our first piece of ribbon. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. All right, next, and don't it doesn't really matter which one we wanna use next, but we'll just go ahead and use our snowman. All right, so I wanna make the tail about that long, and we'll just do the same thing. Not letting go. We're gonna pinch, okay? Twist our ribbon, pinch, and then twist our ribbon again. Maybe we'll make, we might have enough to do a, a fourth loop. Let's see here. Don't let go. Let's 
getting thick. <laughs> it's hard for me to hold on to it. Okay, last ribbon. Tail for that one. Oh, I like this one. This is pretty. Now, you don't have to worry about like them being on top of each other because you can fluff this out once you get it all put together here. So I'm turning the pattern. Hopefully we won't get a hand cramp. I think that's the hardest part is like <laughs> holding on to everything. All righty. Okay. I'm gonna stop there. Okay, now we're gonna take our paddle wire. We are going to twist it tight. Now we have extra wire to wire it to our tree. And then we're just gonna go in here, kind of fluff out our bow. It's not gonna be perfect. I'm not an expert by any means. <laughs> and sometimes mistakes are made for sure. This is some thick ribbon. Gosh, all right. This feels like fabric. to curl the ribbon as it came down, kind of like cascading down the tree. And then I used every single ornament that I showed y'all. <laughs> Threaded the jingle bells, used the wire you saw to hang all the others. Love the fall la la ornaments. Thought those were so pretty. But every single ornament we use, little icicles, that foam garland that was a dollar, these beautiful snowflakes. Now, I was gonna put snowflakes hanging from the window, but I just felt like the tree needed all the ornaments. And honestly, I didn't have the energy to tackle that, but it would have been so pretty. So y'all just imagine what that would look like with snowflakes hanging from it. Maybe we'll do it for the winter, I don't know. But next year, Lord willing, if I'm in charge of this project, we'll have to do that. I love the Joy Snowflake. I love to have like one big statement ornament in the front of the tree, maybe like a word or something. So that's the one I chose. Love the finial ornaments. Just all of them and to think, dollar store. So a tree doesn't have to be expensive to be beautiful. And here is proof. And it's probably the first time I've ever done a complete tree without the help of Hobby Lobby. Everything here came from Family Dollar or Dollar General. Um, aside from the fabric, I just had that piece of fabric at home. Um, it probably came from Walmart and it might have come from Hobby Lobby. But aside from that, even the ribbon, Dollar General. So there you go, Dollar Store Tree. You can see we're set up, covered the tables with white tablecloths and 
These pretty plates, again, came from Dollar General. That's napkins from home, but table covers too. So this whole Sunday School Breakfast brought to you by Dollar General, but I wanted y'all to see it with the lights off. So pretty. It's just nothing like a tree with the lights off. Oh, I love it. I love the white lights. I'm glad we decided to do that instead of the red lights. And my plan is just to donate all of these decorations to the church so they can recreate this tree next year. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna have to talk over Kim. Kim. I'm gonna have to talk over Tim killing the pig over here. He's a loud sausage cooker. We are <laughs> we are gonna collaborate on the cooking. Aw. Nobody I'd rather be in the kitchen with. We're gonna collaborate <laughs> as Ella Gates nearby. We're gonna collaborate on the cooking of this breakfast casserole for our Sunday school breakfast. So Tim is cooking a pound of sausage. This is fresh sausage that my dad brought us, like locally raised. So it's gonna be really good. And then he's also gonna cook the bag of frozen hash browns for me. And I'm going to bring you down and let you see um, what he's doing here. All right, so we got our indoor griddle going. He's cooking a pound of sausage. And then like I said, he's going to cook our frozen hash browns in the sausage grease. And then we're gonna assemble our breakfast casserole, which I will put together and put in the fridge overnight. Then in the morning, I will take it out, let it come to room temperature a little bit, and bake it in the oven. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just getting everything ready to assemble. This is actually Saturday, and we won't eat it until tomorrow, which is Sunday. All right, so sausage has been cooked, and he drained some of the grease. He's going to add it back to the hash browns. This is a whole bag of frozen hash browns. And then we've got our 13 by nine bacon dish here ready to assemble everything. But we found that it's just easier to go ahead and cook your hash browns and get them crispy first. I don't think my original recipe called for you to cook the hash browns. They're just supposed to cook in the casserole in the oven. But we found that they don't really cook that well. And when you take the time to pre-cook them before adding them, that the casserole just, yeah, much better. So that's what we're doing. I am not a fan of cooking sausage. Something about it just turns my stomach. Um, it happened when I was pregnant with Ella, I developed an aversion to sausage and just never got over it. So he does the sausage cooking for me every time we make this casserole, just about. Doesn't he look nice in his Simply Home and Harvest apron? <laughs> he didn't want to get his clothes dirty because we've got lots to do today. So we're gonna let those cook what you say like, 10, 15, time. 20 minutes, uh, takes a while yeah, at least 20, 30 to let them minutes. cook and get crispy. And then we'll come back and assemble everything. About three days. Got a dollar. <laughs> no, it's been, what, 30 minutes probably at no. least? Well, I was making some cakes over there. They're on the oven. Probably 10, 15 nah, minutes. Okay. It's been a while. They are starting to crisp up. So probably another five or six minutes and they'll be done. Patience is key which Jennifer does not have. But Tim has, so we're good. All right, so hash browns are ready. Tim's gonna go ahead and get those in the bottom of our 13 by nine casserole dish and spread them out. <clears throat> we typically make an entire bag, like you see here. Um, it looks like we have a lot more, but I think maybe I use the larger casserole dish. I don't know. I think once we get them all spread out, it'll be fine. It's a hash browns in the bottom, and all you do is just sprinkle your cooked sausage right over the top. All right, while Tim is working on that, I'm going to shred our sharp cheddar cheese here, and hopefully this is two cups. It'll be close enough. That's what you need, two cups of shredded cheese. I like to buy the block cheese and shred it myself. I think it not only tastes better, but the consistency is a lot better. And it doesn't have sawdust in it. It doesn't have sawdust in it. That's right. And that cheese grinder is amazing. It is. This Amazon cheese grater. You should get this for your friends for Christmas. You should put this on your own Christmas list for Christmas. Tell your friends to get it for you. It is one of my favorite purchases this year. I love it. 
And I have to say that usually, like, if I hand grade wow. a block of cheese, I might get close to two cups. But for some reason, this seems to make the cheese stretch further. I don't know. Maybe that's just my imagination. But anyway, it looks like two cups to me. So I'll set that aside, and then we're going to beat our eggs. So our two cups of shredded cheese, we're just going to sprinkle right on top of our sausage and hash browns. I have to tell y'all while I'm doing this that Alex and Tim just left with Alex behind the wheel for the second time, the second day in a row. Alex got his learner's permit yesterday. And so he hit the road strong. I think they drove for about an hour. Tim even had him on a major highway yesterday. Dads are like that, aren't they? I said specifically, don't get on the major highway. And then I come home and Alex is like, hey, guess where I drove today? So anyway, but it all worked out. It's just, you know, a little bit of time for this mom. But anyway, he just, instead of going, they were, they were taking like, I guess, you know, easier route. So today I think they're gonna do a different route. So they just left and whew, had a little prayer. That is one way to get close to Jesus and get a, more of a prayer life is for your kids to start driving. Whew, Lord. Okay, but back to our breakfast casserole. So we've got our cheese here and we'll sit this to the side. And now we're going to crack and beat eight eggs. And yes, we are doing store-bought eggs because this is about the time that chickens slow down. They're laying, but our girls have really been um, on the laying struggle bus for several months now and some of our really faithful layers are molting so that means they're not gonna lay at all so we get about one to two eggs a day out of our 10 chickens that means that we've been hitting the Sam's Club that's where we found the better deal even better than Aldi right now on eggs so we will be supplementing at least through the winter months, I know. All right, got our eight eggs here. I'm gonna give these a whisk. Now I'm gonna add our two cups of milk. I have a feeling this is gonna be right on it, but we'll get our measuring cup out just to be sure. Using 2% milk, you use what you have. There's one. Yeah, two, we had a little bit of extra. I thought that would take it all, so we... Got a little bit of milk left there. Continue to get these eggs mixed up. Try not to make a mess. All right, now, I'm gonna give you the measurements here, but y'all know I'm gonna eyeball it. We need one teaspoon of salt. We need a half a teaspoon of black pepper. A fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. I typically use onion powder. I couldn't find my onion powder. I might be out of it. So I'm gonna do a fourth of a teaspoon of just minced onion. See, Tim's not here, so he won't know. But he normally can tolerate the minced onion. Definitely need it for flavor. All right, gonna get that a mix. This is so easy, y'all. And this is gluten-free. I didn't mention that, but this one is gluten-free. There are some breakfast casseroles out there that are not. This one happens to be one that is. Okay. Just gonna pour this evenly over the top. All right, now you could go ahead and bake this in your preheated 375 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes. However, we are pre-making this to bake it in the morning. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm just gonna cover it. I'm gonna let it come to room temperature. It's still a little bit warm, but I'm just gonna sit it in the refrigerator. And in the morning, we'll take it out. I may just put it on the counter for a few minutes as the oven's preheating, and then it will go straight into the oven. So this is a great recipe to make like the night before Christmas on Christmas Eve. And then that way it's already put together. And all you have to do is just pull it out the next morning and bake it. And you have breakfast for your family and you don't have to be so busy missing all the fun Christmas festivities. We have used it for that um, on occasion. Gonna set this to the side, let it cool off. And then I will bring you back in the morning. We will put it in the oven. We'll go to our Sunday school breakfast. Hopefully I can get some footage of all the other yummy things there. And it's gonna be a fun morning. It's Sunday morning. This got baked at 375 degrees for about 35 minutes. It's ready to go. We're gonna pack it up and head to Sunday school. All right guys, 
We are in the car heading to church. And look, we don't have coats on. Tim's even in short sleeves. Hello, winter in Virginia. That's the way it is around here. One day, it's 20 degrees. The next day, it's in the 60s. Um, but we are probably going to appreciate a little break from all that cold weather. I'll try to get some footage of all the yummy food that we'll be having today in Sunday school. Um, but if I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and say goodbye here. I hope you all are having a wonderful Christmas season. It is my favorite time of year. Is it your favorite time of year? Yeah. <laughs> well, until next time, remember to live simply, use what you have, enjoy the moments you've been given, and we will see you all in the next one.